<laughs> All right, numbers. so we're now continuing because um, this, um, this session is about um, neglected tropical diseases. Thank you, Christine. And, um, and malaria being one of them, but we're moving on to another one, like new uh, topic, new disease. I've learned a new word this week, schistosomiasis. Yeah, I did well, right? Yes, you did well. So, so, so uh, what is it? It's, it's, it's also a, a tropical disease, right? I understand it's caused by parasites. Yes. Yeah. And I understand major um, important, you could say, Norwegian academics are actually working uh, on it, doing imp important work to combat it. Yes, uh, that's yeah. also right, Osta. So this is your chance to educate me, okay? Okay. Go for it. Um, I will uh, tell you about Dr. Eirun Kjetlan from uh, um, Oslo University Hospital, uh, who is also a professor uh, at uh, the University of KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. She has spent uh, 30 years in schistosomiasis research, um, receiving major grants from uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Norwegian Research Council, and now, uh, just recently, from the European Union <coughs> in cooperation with several institutions, both in Europe and in Africa. And her research has contributed in making uh, this disease and especially its consequences known to healthcare workers um, through training courses and also by uh, making a pocket atlas in cooperation with uh, the WHO. She could not attend here today, unfortunately, uh, but I talked to her just recently and her take home message is, very few people work in this field, leaving women in endemic areas suffering from misdiagnosis and inadequate treatment. Research on schistosomiasis needs to be facilitated. Mm. Absolutely, and um, that is precisely what uh, this Latin seminar is about. So, um, Professor Shetlam is not here, but uh, her PhD student is, who's also uh, been very much involved in work on schistosomiasis uh, since she was a student at, um, a medical student at the University of Oslo. So from the Department of Health at Oslo University Hospital. Please welcome Solrun Seftlan. Thank you so much, both of you. I'm very honored to be here on behalf of my brilliant supervisor and a large team of great people that she has been working with for many years. And I'm very fortunate, fortunate to be part of that group now. So, I will talk briefly about schistosomiasis in general, but mostly about female genital schistosomiasis, implications for women's health globally, about diagnostics, and about further needs in research. So this is a parasitic waterborne disease. It affects rural populations uh, in areas where there's lack of safe water and sanitation. And 250 million people require annual treatment in schools with anti-worm medication. Transmission of this disease occurs in 74 countries all over the world a lot of it in sub-Saharan Africa. There are five different subspecies leading to human disease. There are also a few species that give infection in other mammals. So, eggs are excreted from human urination or feces, ending up in freshwater sources. In freshwater snails, worms will multiply and they penetrate human skin through playing, bathing, fishing. 
And inside uh, the human body, this worm will mature, they will pair up, and they will lay eggs in different tissue. So on the side there, you see a male and female schistosome pairing up inside our body. And it's the inflammatory reaction to these eggs that gives disease. So if these eggs are deposited in female genital organs, we call, them, we call this disease female genital schistosomiasis. And that has been Iron Shetland's main focus, the, the main focus of our group. It affects all parts of the female genital tract, or it may affect. And this disease causes a broad variety of symptoms. Patients report stinking discharge, bleeding between menstruations, stomach pain, genital itch, and all these symptoms may last for many years. They keep being exposed as they keep using dirty fresh water. And uh, this can also occur in girls uh, down to two years old. Uh, it can occur before puberty and before any sexual contact. So in addition to these stigmatizing symptoms, there are increased rates of ectopic pregnancies, abortion, infertility, and there is a threefold increased risk of having HIV for women living with female genital schistosomiasis. Some research also indicates that there's an associa association with cervical cancer. It's not been fully established yet, but either way, schistosomiasis is a dif uh, very important differential diagnosis to cervical precancer and cancer. So there's no lab test that has shown to be accurate enough to diagnose this. So the current gold standard for diagnosis is to do a gynecological examination with a colposcope. This was established by consensus of global experts. And in the picture here, you see a colposcope. It's big, it's heavy, and it's expensive. This is a close-up picture of the lowest part of the uterus in a woman. And the opening is where the baby comes out, <laughs> just for you to be orientated. Uh, these changes you see here are signs of accumulation of schisto eggs in the tissue with an inflammatory reaction around them. And you can also see contact bleeding from the examination. This is another close-up picture of the cervix, showing what we call sandy patches because of the yellowish color in the tissues. I don't know if you can see the color here, but this yellowish color, these changes indicates usually long-standing infection. So we have four types of lesions. Grainy sandy patches on the top left, homogeneous yellow sandy patches, rubbery papules, and abnormal blood vessels. And these lesions can occur alone or together. And abnormal blood vessels, this finding is clinically important because it also occurs in cervical precancer and cancer. So the work with the classification of uh, Dr. Chetlon's group and others, it led to this publication, a WHO pocket atlas for female genital schistosomiasis. And this is meant to be a clinical manual for healthcare professionals and has been distributed to 53 countries. However, female genital schistosomiasis is still not being diagnosed. Healthcare professionals in endemic areas are not aware of this problem. And this waterborne infection uh, is most likely currently being interpreted as a sexually transmitted disease or as cervical cancer even. 
So patients are currently receiving the wrong treatment and the wrong management. I just want to emphasize on the public health impact of this problem, because you see here the areas that are endemic of female genital schistosomiasis. This overlaps very clearly with the, uh, with the areas where HIV prevalence is still very high and the areas where mortality rates for cervical cancer is very high. So these institutions here, they got together to start screening for two diseases at the same time. Both are diagnosed with a colposcope. And to be able to do uh, this type of examinations in a rural area, we need a cheap mobile handheld colposcope. You saw the one in the picture, it's not possible to use in a rural clinic and it's also expensive. So such a device is being developed by our partners and will be tested in a diagnostic trial in three southern African countries. We're doing this within the health systems and at the same time the goal is to make free colposcopy training for female genital schistosomiasis available to healthcare professionals through the WHO. So to sum up, female genital schistosomiasis affects girls and women in rural poor communities. It's not diagnosed, it's not uh, managed. And the next steps is to make easier diagnosis for this public health problem and for this disease to be included in management protocols in endemic countries, but also in non-endemic countries where there's immigrants. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.